if it's all about uh, the vision of the, the human or the African or the future. It was um, the idea that um, connecting the whole African ancestry with the DNA, which is very similar in many ways. Um, so having, so it's a character with a mission, let's put it that way. So where at the same time we'll be able to read what is in the DNA, the mission, right? We can read on the DNA, but at the same time it's a mission. Um, the ancestors are giving to her because it's all the idea that the dead are not dead. So then you have obstacles that are stopping you to fulfill your mission. Um, so that's the kind of system that was put together in the story, which um, um, it's set 150 years from now. One of the diseases that will really be like big then is bad luck. Bad luck is just be like having a flu, and then it could be fixed very easily because of the understanding of the DNA and whatever. So, so that's the future. <laughs> um, <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> One of the last things I'll just talk about is the idea that um, uh, to go beyond cinema, meaning if cinema being just, let's say, if you look at it in a, in a therapeutic way where people see a psychiatrist and who will heal them based on the story, their story, you know, and I think it's, um, uh, if you define cinema, like, uh, uh, it's about telling stories with pictures and sound, um, you wonder how, if it's possible that cinema would be able to heal us, you know, if we, if we really push it, instead of just keeping it as a consuming or, or something just to make money. So, um, one of the things I like is uh, the, the Boris Cyrulnik is one of the, I think it's like a psycho something. Anyway, so he is telling the story of himself who was a child of the war, during the war, and who was healed by I mean, not here, but uh, I think it was a Superman film that helped him. Uh, um, so he's telling, he's saying why children like um, heroes, uh, strong action heroes. And he's saying that it's because they're weak and they are very small in the world of adults that are very strong. So he's calling it the rehabilitating hero, you know. Uh, and he says that uh, most of people who live with trauma uh, uh, kind of need a rehabilitating hero to kind of overcome the trauma. So I like the fact that he used cinema to kind of tell his own story, but also to see how um, uh, uh, cinema, what cinema could do uh, you know, in, 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 for people who have trauma. And um, I always like also to compare it to, um, let's say, um, African colonial trauma, some kind of, uh, because you still have today many cases where if you talk about the concept of shame, or uh, I like always to give the example of uh, uh, people who bleach to try to be white, and I think, one of the richest men in Cameroon is selling these products. And it means that he's selling very well. So if the idea that somebody wants to change the color of his skin is so strong, I think it has to do with uh, the, the way you see yourself. So I think those trauma can think it's past, but they're still there. And I think cinema somehow uh, could obviously address them. Um, so um, I, I kind of, Oh, see this idea of healing cinema, we can call it that way. Um, uh, uh, potential somehow. Uh, and uh, the problem today for me, I think, is just because we see cinema is, as I was saying at the beginning, has been kind of 
hijacked um, uh, and is not really used in research um, as it should be and also it's um, not very collaborative despite all the tools and all the, um, uh, the technology we have uh, we did an exhibition in Berlin called Welcome to Applied Fiction. It was kind of a critique of the way we practice cinema today. Uh, and also the fact that it's very old fashioned because the film might look with the effects, but when you know the process, uh, it hasn't really changed much in almost 150 years. Um, so that's kind of where um, I I see the future of cinema, but I guess the future of human also in relation to cinema. Um, I just finished with uh, this organization I was kind of involved with. It's, um, cre it was created by Francesco Maselli, who was a uh, uh, Luis Visconti assistant. He's a very old man now, I think he's like 95 years old. Um, he decided to bring together his friends, uh, people like Ken Lodge, Woody Allen, because he was kind of uh, feeling sad for cinema because he felt that human beings are not at the center anymore of cinema and the way it practice. Um, the money is taking too much space and also uh, technology. And without being against these things, he was just thinking that maybe we should bring back humans at the center of, uh, of cinema. So that organization is called World Cinema Alliance. Um, I'm part of it, and we're still looking for what to do with it. So thank you very much. Sure to 
generative. Uh, yes. But together with the toxic. Toxic, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I feel like right now we're getting only to toxic. <laughs> um, because the intention is not the human. I mean, nobody writing the script cares about you. I know, I'm exaggerating. <laughs> but the system really uh, around uh, the whole film uh, thing right now doesn't care much when I say the system is Hollywood. Uh, I think they really wonder where the human is going. I don't think so. Uh, so um, but I also believe that it's a field, it could be a field of study, without taking it out of the art and all this, I still think um, uh, it, could be, it could improve, it could be improved with the knowledge that I've been accumulated, like in cognitive science. I didn't think we don't use any of these things you know, in cinema today. Um, and, and knowledge being accumulated, Somebody was actually saying that um, the school system we have today um, won't be able to help our children who will be confronted to artificial intelligence. Obviously, you know, people say that uh, the, the machine will kill the human, you know, something like this. Uh, but, but it's very clear that cinema, in that sense, um, um, could do a lot more, I think.